Hello and welcome to TGI Kates. It is episode 145. Today is February 5th. And then here's my very first show. <laughs> so, whew, what a week, right? I see we got some people in the stream ready to learn about duct typing and interfaces and Kubernetes and somebody from Israel, howdy, Netherlands, North Texas, sweet, Helsinki, but go kick our other Finnish friend to get on the stream. He's apparently in bed, Mr. Vile. Boy, okay. Okay, are we ready to to start well, actually a uh, week in review right oh 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 i pushed a button i'm sorry i'm new at this bam all right so what happened this week uh well in core kubernetes we got an announcement that uh v1 beta 1 for CRDs and admission webhook configurations are uh, heading out. Well, I won't miss you V1 beta one, but if you happen to still be using those, you're gonna be real sad in, uh, in 0.22. So you've got some, you've got some time, but you know, get on that. Maybe you better, you better update. I see kind 0.10 is out that that's from two weeks ago uh that's that's good news good news i'm still running kind nine because you know but maybe i should update it but not right now and uh heads up if uh you're thinking about writing a kep and it's not already in the system the freeze is uh the ninth which is in a few days so you know, you have the weekend to go write your enhancements. Uh, yes, we're talking about re API removal in 121, not deprecation. So it's already been deprecated for a while in, I think maybe a release or two ago. So they are, they are ready to be Hoist it out. Kenny asks, am I nervous? Yeah, you know what? It's a weird thing, actually, to, to be broadcasting to the internet and talking to yourself. So, you know, it's something to get used to. <laughs> okay. Actually, let me tell you a funny story. Uh, side note here. It, but while you watch me struggle reading the news here, uh, for about three weeks i was a radio dj at in college and it really it didn't go well because i i couldn't read the cards and not and i, I was just too nervous to read the advertising cards and you had to read like i don't know five every 15 minutes and i just i couldn't do that job at that time and i was I, so I, I i said i'm sorry i really want to be this like night dj but I can't read your advertisement for like uh, life insurance or whatever it was. So, <laughs> you know, everybody's, everybody has things that are hard for them. This happens to be mine. Okay. What's radio? Yeah, it was, I mean, it's kind of fun. Although, so here's, here was the one bummer. It was a college radio station and I could play anything I wanted as long as it was one of the CDs that they had. <laughs> I didn't really know any of the music and uh because it was all this like indie interesting stuff. So didn't go well. I was like basically randomly picking CDs and sticking them in. I'm like, I hope this is good. <laughs> okay, back to the back to the news. Focus. So uh our our good friend Tiffany is going to be uh occasional TGI host. She's written up a blog about Valero. You want to back up your cluster take a look here uh it'll get you going just in case you, you know want some persistence 
Oh boy, pinned up. I didn't. Oh, okay. So let's see. It kind of looks like pineapple, right, Matt? I don't know what this is. I didn't click this yet. Uh, some toys. That's neat. Uh, batteries included authentication system. Okay, I'm I'm in. I'm in. Uh, hmm. Okay. So I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds interesting. Uh, at first pass, maybe it's OAuth. For apps in Kubernetes, and if that's the case, uh, that's cool because there's not really a great solution for that. Scottsdale, nice. <laughs> we got Mark in the chat. Yeah, I, I got the uh, amazing opportunity to, to make these hoodies. This is actually embroidered. How fancy is that? Okay, uh, good news, Contour 112 is out. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, also some nice Knative integration if you go to Net Contour, That's what I use. Not to toot my own horn, but you know what? It just kind of works. So it's the controversy of Helm. Somebody added this. This is an interesting read if, if you have a minute to go over it and I I kind of agree with what they're talking about. I think the basic premise is that well, Helm is is this ball of opinions, and if you want to make a change that's not already baked into that template, you really have to uh, fork the chart, okay? Uh, which kind of also feels backwards to me if we're talking about uh, templatization of stuff. So I. Uh, I'm not a big Helm user. I'll, I'll, I'll touch it if I need to, but not 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 a big thing for me. Some and in some interesting news, you know, so Docker's having some uh, maybe some midlife drama, right? So they're looking for ways to keep keep all this core tech going because you know honestly, a lot of people depend on what Docker has provided, and they have gone and donated the Docker distribution to the CNCF, which is interesting. So maybe we we get some more registries out there. That'd be nice. Let me check on the chat. How are we doing? Anybody anybody in the uh, the Rambly? So you can speak. Trash talk and kibitz me. Control plus. What if I do one better? Wrong. Is that better? <laughs> hey, it's old Scott. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you. My my nickname is New Scott Super Hack Atastic with the W or an E. Uh, it's because of Scott Stout here. It's you know, one of my friends, long term friend. Uh, he was the first Scott, so we we call him Scott Classic, and I am New Scott. And that's so. If you've ever wondered why my name is that, it's it's right there. Okay, all right, back to this. Uh, okay, so I found this this uh, blog post that's talking about the Kubernetes operator pattern. And if you're confused or have some questions, it's pretty good. And there's a bunch of fun pictures, and there's even some animated ones, which uh, I thought was pretty awesome. So I think it's a good, succinct, uh, long-form post of operators in Kubernetes worth the read. If you're if you have questions, then maybe use it as a jumping off point to go and look at other things or read documentation or read a couple books. Speaking of books, we'll jump one. Uh, so Knative in action is hitting the presses right now. So that's you if you want a physical copy of the Knative in action book. Which I'll show you a little picture. You could get yours today for, uh, you know, 50 bucks. What a deal. 
there was this, so there's this other blog post around demystifying the container tool jib. If you don't know what jib is, it's a imaging library for Java things. And I, I think this is on the right direction. And I point this out because someone needs to pick up jib and turn it into code because that would be sweet. So I, I point the co, Joe did a, a co episode. Uh, I have to look up the episode. I am a huge, huge co fan. Uh, I basically, well, I have the luxury of staying in the go land, go world. And so I basically just use co all the time, all day. Yeah, that's right. Evan points out jib is uh, fast Docker or fast container images without needing Docker, like the CLI Docker locally. I guess I, there's a uh, there's a new K pack release that that just showed up. That's cool. Okay, okay, okay. So we're here to talk about ducks, and uh, let's see if I can see a. Uh, oh. See, so you raise a hand of who understands what in the world we're talking about when we talk about duck types in Kubernetes. We could start with, what is a duck type? The name gets its, uh, it's it's okay. So, in in programming languages, right? Like in Java, you would say something like. Um, foo class implements, and then it would list all of the interfaces that it has opted into, right? And that's that's a very explicit, I am this thing. A duck type is more like uh, something in Python. It was made popular, but Go does this too, where you say, I know that I would like to interact with this object in this certain way because it has you know, this method and this method. I'm gonna find an instance of an implementation and attempt to overlay that interface on top of the in implementation. So I'm going to basically probe the, the instance of that thing to say, do you have these methods? Do you have this shape? Do you do these things? And if it passes the duck test, then it's that duck type and we can do stuff with it. The interesting thing about duck typing is that the implementer of that target class never knew they were being targeted as a duck type. Yes, the, there, there's a cute phrase, um, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's a duck. So what that really means is, you know, it, it has a certain shape, it does a certain thing, must be a duck type. So I have, I have set up um, a semi-contrived thing that we can walk through and then add to it as a as a duck type. Let's see. Uh... Yes, uh, JavaScript also does duck typing if you want. Um, I've mostly used it inside of Python and Go. So, okay. Here's the scenario. Let me switch to this one. Oh, uh, the hack.io link is knative, or no, uh, tgik.io slash notes, slash notes. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay, here we go. So um, what do we got? So I built this uh, thing. Actually, sorry, we're gonna we're just gonna jump in, and then I'm gonna hopefully answer some questions, and then we're gonna jump into some actual live coding stuffs, uh, and and see where we end up. So first off, what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna copy and paste this little kind cluster creation thing. Basically, I'm I'm gonna set up a kind cluster with some extra things so that it lets me build images and push to it. So. Here we go. We're going to wait for that. It has the font, by the way. Is it uh, readable? Can I send someone a bigger monitor?
How is duck typing implemented under the hood in the compiler? You know what? I'm not I'm not totally sure. Um, I have some guesses, but uh, I just use it. If only there were some compiler nerds in the audience. Okay, here we go. Getting some nodes. You know what? You know, take a lesson from the kind tool. Uh, cute emojis and check marks. It just it kind of makes me feel like I'm doing something super important by using it. So you know, if you have an opportunity, add an emoji or some like scrolly thing or whatever, because it makes me feel good. And we're just going to make sure that, uh, so I'm going to export the kind cluster name. I called this one TGIK. And then I'm going to point my uh, local co instance to, to push to the local registry there. So I do have Docker running and, and installed, but I don't actually like writing Docker files. So I, I didn't, um, I, there's no Docker file here. We can, we can look at this code. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and we'll get into this more a little bit later. Um, let's see. I'm, I guess I'm gonna, I'll show you the config. It, so I'm going to do some secret magic co stuff. So we're going to deploy this operator, and then I'll explain what in the world it is in a second. So. Uh, So I'm going to apply the config directory. I don't have any images or Docker files. I'm going to use code to kind of build up this stuff, but that's not really what we're talking about. It's just kind of an efficiency that I, that I have, uh, I've short circuited my little dev, dev loop. Okay, cool. So let's see. So let's get the namespaces and I can show you. Ah, cool. So there's this new math namespace in this new cluster. And in there is, you know, it's a bunch of stuff. Uh, the important parts are the controller and the webhook. This, this project has, uh, oh, actually, I can show you this. So I've made up two CRDs. I didn't put the schema in here because uh, this is a silly, silly, silly demo. Please don't do anything like this in for reals. Uh, it's a contrived thing uh, that I'm trying to show what's just a, an example. And so, okay, so we'll we'll make we'll make an instance of the add resource. Okay, so the the concept here is that we're making oper operators as CRDs and part of the spec is going to be what the that operator does the the operand in mathematic terms so kubectl will get and then we'll they're in this uh, category called math so we can get them and I have made an add one right the expression is one and the answer is one okay that's that's boring. So let's add some, some more numbers. All right, so what the spec says here is, uh, you know, it's a kind add, add a few, the bottom of the screen. Oh, oop. Thanks for the tip. Okay. So we're going to make another one. And if you read this, you know, it's going to say, uh, add up these values, one, two, three, four. And, and we'll take a look. And in fact, uh, my silly, silly, silly reconciler has gone and looked and said, yep, I'm going to, I developed this expression uh, that represents this CRD. And the result is this. So we can edit that. It's an add object, add view. So here's where the duck typing comes in. In the status of these resources, I've defined expression. So status.expression is a string that 
represents something, right? Like whatever the, the equation that's required to produce the result in spec or the, in the status. And so the duct type doesn't actually know what is in the spec or what this, what any of the, the pieces mean. All it understands is status.expression and status.result mean these certain things. So now we can kind of look at other objects in the cluster and uh, figure something out about them. And of course, you know, we, we can change stuff. So we've added, edited, add a few. Uh, we'll get the math again. Cool. So we can see that expression has updated. But we can do fancier things. In the implementation detail of the add resource, the reason why I added value is because I also have this thing called ref. Ref is an object reference to a doc type that uh, implements this uh, results duck, if that makes sense. And we might have to talk about duck types and partial schema when we look at the code of how this works, but for now we'll, we'll keep on charging on with this silly, silly demo. Okay, so what's happened? This is interesting. So I've um, here's the schema up here for the add refs, and in its spec, I I give a static value, and then I give two object references to the two things that we just created. Uh, and what's happened is the controller, it's it's just set to basically take the the expression and add it together, and then add up the result because it's add. Okay, all right. So we can do the same thing for subtract. We'll just make some of these. And where it gets fun, and this is where the duct type stuff comes in, is I can mix the resources. So now I have this really uh, more interesting. So it's, it's real type is an add object. And I've made the mixed expression one plus an object ref plus an object ref. And the first object ref in the mixed uh, add CO is a subtraction object. So demo over, show done. Everybody understand duct? No, I'm just kidding. So, okay, so what the demo is, and if we have I think if we have the patience and the time to do it, we could make another resource that implements the duck that uh, will mix in with this controller without me having to redeploy anything or change anything about what we installed for the maths bit. Should we charge ahead or should we step back and talk about how this is happening? Maybe give me a, I don't know, Put a duck in the chat if you think we should take a pause and and uh, ask some more questions. <laughs> Does the math CRD recurse? It it will recurse. Um, it will recurse. It will not detect loops because I wrote this in a couple hours yesterday. <laughs> you get what you pay for. All right. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna pause for a second, and uh, we're gonna take a, a little look at the controller here to see what's going on. Uh, so I have two reconcilers. There's an add and a subtract. So we'll take a look at add. And the reconciler function uh, method. Let me just make this a little bigger. It's kind of what you would expect. So we have some magic in Knative that helps us uh, generate a bunch of all of the preamble pieces for re reconciliation. And the end result is I just have to implement this reconcile kind. And in the next demo, we're, we're going to try to do it in not Knative land because duct typing isn't dependent on Knative. But um, I implemented this quickly yesterday by uh, using our frameworks. So, so basically, I just say for every operand inside the spec, so we could, sorry, I'll show you that object first. 
So I here's an add type. It it looks like a standard Kubernetes object. It's going to use client gen. In its here's it uh, here's its spec right. Its spec I I have one object. It's a slice of operands that's labeled add right. So inside of JSON an an operand is defined. Where'd it go? Oh, here, sorry. So it's just what we were showed in the, the YAML. It's either a ref or a value. Um, I made them pointers to, to determine if it's null or not. Yeah, don't feed the ducks popcorn. So, okay, so that's what the ad looks like. And then the reconciler, again, is I, I'm, I'm just looping through them because it's a very simple example to kind of describe duck types. I just check to see if, you know, like length and I, so here's where the recursion happens, right? I I don't actually look at what's down. I rely on the reconciliation of the object below, like that I'm pointing to, to come up with a result. So it will recurse, but it doesn't actually like traverse the recurse. If that makes sense. Try to say that five times fast. So the magic though, I glaze over this, right? What I'm doing here is I'm going to get a result. Get results that says, if the reference that I'm pointing to is not null, go and get the results. And, right, this is a big hand wavy thing. I, I made this thing called a results type that's part of the duck package. It's in this project. Uh, we, can, we can take a look there. And it's kind of what you'd expect too. It, it uses client gen but I don't actually generate a client because there's no API endpoint that you could actually go and, and fetch this thing. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sit in front of, well, I'll, it's just a definition of an object that you could cast any other runtime object into a, and interact with it. Where am I going? Okay, yeah. So, so it looks like a normal type, right? It has a type meta. It has object meta. It doesn't have a spec because I don't care, right? I, I'm only interested in the results in this duct type. So I only map in the status, which means when all the, the tooling and the libraries take whatever I'm wondering is a, the duck and it converts it to that thing, spec gets stripped off because I don't care. And inside here is a I an inline I results. I don't. And this is the duck type here, its expression and result, just the same exact thing that I showed in inside the, uh, the add resource. The duck type matches the shape because results is the partial schema of the spec of the duck type that I'm interested in. A bunch of tooling, uh, note this fancy gen duck thing, the tooling expects some of the other object meta to help me uh, deal with dynamic clients, so I don't have to. So there's a bunch of tooling and wrappers that uh, that uh, help help, right? So okay, so we're, we'll go back to here. So the the get results thing, we're using some tooling that comes out of, out of Knative. Given a GVK and a name and a namespace go and fetch an object tracker. Or we're going to track that object, which means that we get updates for, for changes for these things that uh, occur. And so we can get re enqueued and re-reconcile as our object refs update, which is interesting because I can watch things I don't actually know about ahead of time, which, uh-oh. What did I miss? Oh, just duct types. It's no big deal. Okay, okay, right. So uh, basically, there's the there's a I can ask the informer factory for a lister given a GVR. So you know, under the hood here, there's like a bunch of dynamic clients and some other stuff and some caches that's based on a GVR. I can give it the the lister interface, which is exactly what you would expect for typed clients. So like a typed lister. And then I can go and list that object. I can, you know, because Go doesn't have generics, 
yet, but maybe wait a release or two. Oh, come on, Mark. I have an ID. I'm going to pop it out in one second. Uh, so we cast we cast that thing to a results type, if it, if it is, and then we return it. So up here, get results returns back an object that's known by the GVK that's defined by the object ref. And reminder, that object ref looks like this. So in this case, as the add reconciler is running, it finds a ref that's not null. It says, OK, cool. I guess you're a subtract, whatever that is, from the same API version, which is maybe cheating if you you want to be a purist. And then it goes and in, in basically converts that to the duct type. And then I can operate them. I can I can operate on the duct types as if I know what they are. But I don't actually know what they are. And I don't really need to care. So okay. Carlos asks, do I want the expression or the result out of the ref? I actually want both because I don't want to calculate the, here's, here's my micro optimization for the demo. And this is stupid details in it. This is why I didn't actually pick a real thing. Um, I'm just concatenating, concatenating the expressions wrapped up in parentheses, right? So if, if the uh, result type, you know, I, so I, I grab the status of the expression or sorry, the result status expression, and I just concatenate that inside of parentheses, and the reconciler uh, adds in a plus. And then whatever the whatever the result is, I add it in. And so subtract actually looks very identical. I think I changed a couple things. It turns out that you can't assume you can subtract zero. Like zero plus a number is a positive number, but zero minus a number is uh, not what you expect. So subtract subtract had to understand some more state, so I, I stuck that in there. And then aside from that change, the only real code change between the two reconcilers is the minus sign there and there. Okay, okay, here we go. So um, chime check, okay, 130. So here is where we get real nervous. We're going to try to add the square CRT, okay? Um, but we're going to use controller runtime. No. Uh, oh, multiply. Well, we're going to we're going to make it square. Okay. So, we have a a good start of the project here. We got a readme and a license. So, I've already installed controller runtime and I I hope it's still all connected. And I'm going to follow along in the quick start guide with some modifications. So this isn't really about like how to use controller runtime, but I, I wanted to show that like this stuff just connects if if you connect it. Okay, so I'm gonna init that project with tgikates.io. Please don't sue me, tgikates.io. And then we're gonna make, we can make it, well, let's, let's do fun. We're gonna make a kind square. So inside this group TGIK, we're going to make a, a, a kind square and YOLO straight to V1. So that's going to do its stuff. And now, now here's the interesting part. I, I honestly haven't used controller runtime in over, oh, in over, uh, I don't know. Couple, of, it's been a year. It's it's been at least a year. And so, okay, so the, the docs tell me I have to do a make install, and I don't totally understand what that is because I don't also use make files. So make install, what does it do? I don't know. It makes manifest. So we're not going to do that. Um, in fact. So for, for just for Mark, please work, come on. Hmm. One second, one second, technical, oh, come on. I think, uh... 
Aha. Okay. Uh, I use Goland. I, I kind of like this IDE. It has all the key bindings that my fingers know. I spent several years, maybe more than that, doing a Java stuff in IntelliJ, and I really liked it. And so when Goland came out, I was, I was big into it. Okay. Um, now I don't, I don't. So like I said, I don't really like make files, and uh, I also don't really like Docker files. So we're gonna make a couple modifications to the base installation here, and uh, I just need to. Okay, right. Reviewing. Okay, so in the config inside of the webhook, what is this thing? Okay, cool. So they have this concept called the manager. The manager has an image controller latest. Well, I'm not going to make one of those. So this is going to be part of uh, new Scott multiply, right? So I'm going to co-ify it if I can. Co creates manifest correctly. So we don't need to tell the pod what the executable is. So we save that. And then I'm kind of done with the, everything else is fine. Actually, I don't know what their, their CRD is. Where does, where's my, where's my stuff? Hmm. Well, that'll be interesting. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, and then I can, okay, so now I can go back to this one. And I'm going to take that YAML and get an error. Cool. But what? Oh, 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 oh. Because we're targeting the default. Oh, come on. Maybe I maybe I do have to do a make install. I, maybe that does some generation stuff that I need first. OK. OK, it did. I don't know. I just I just work here. Right, like so I'm gonna pull out my favorite fast ID. <laughs> and so okay, so let's let's look in here. Did it, okay, so it has that co directory. I, now it's out of customize, it's now just straight YAML. I can deal with this. So uh you know for fun, let's just let's just apply that. release so it's going to do the build it's going to while well, it's so okay so here's the quick version of what co is doing it's looking for that uh basically the same thing that has the main function in this case it's at the root of the project and it's compiling it and putting it into a container that we know works well with go which is distroless because you don't need anything else yeah, co so co is the containerization magic. So if we look here, there's this new multiply system. So if we look at the pods in there, and we look at the container, the container that is mine, it's this. So co has done a build, it's replaced uh, the outbound YAML and, and taken that new YAML and pushed it to kubectl apply, right? So now I don't have to think about doing Docker builds or anything like that. I can just push it through Co, Co containerizes it, and there's a bunch of optimizations there that work really well for Go workloads, which a lot of controllers and Kubernetes are built in Go. So it's a great, great flow. Okay, so we have a running controller, and I, I think that there's like an example we uh, kube cuddle apply config uh, samples. Okay, we made a square function or a square resource. Oh boy, oh boy. Doesn't have a spec. 
It does. It doesn't have a status though, so hmm. this is where it might get interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to Goland. And we are now we're in hacky land, right? We we're gonna we're gonna get it done. Well, it's not the uh, layout I would have picked, but all right. We're gonna leave the foo string in there because I've already applied one, and I don't want there to be problems. So we're just gonna leave that alone. What we're gonna do now is uh, I don't know. Um, how about base? So base is an int. We're gonna, you know, it's gonna be a base to the two. Maybe that's a bad number. I don't know. What do people call that number? All right, YOLO. Well, we're gonna call it base. Wait, don't edit this. Oh, edit this file. That's a really scary warning. How do people, okay. Scaffolding for you. Okay, got it. Okay, I, I owned it. I changed it. I'm a little nervous that there's no status though in that object up there. Aha, because there's nothing in this. So if we, right, so what's the contract? We know that we need a result. And result was an int. Let's pretend like only ints exist right now because it's a silly demo. And an expression. Okay, so now we're back to the duct type shape, right? Do I have to do more things or is that gonna just work? Well, we'll find out. We'll find out. I heard uh, Kube Builder doesn't have to, you don't have to generate stuff anymore. So I'm curious what that's like. Okay, oh, hey, I found the, the square controller. So in here, what I wanna do, oh, look at that. Uh, oh, I have to. Okay, all right. What is this? <laughs> what are you? It's a time. What? Okay. How do I? How do I get? How do we get the object? Hold on. Okay. All right. So abort. Are we we're gonna uh, we're gonna go to the Chrome window and we're gonna learn about how to do this. Uh, yeah. You see deep copy. I think that they there is some. There's some code generation that has to happen, but they don't generate the client. I think they filter things through the dynamic client. So it's all at kind of runtime. All right, how do I get the object? Uh, next steps, cron job tutorial. That, that looks like a good plan. Oh my goodness. What I wanna know is how to get the object from uh, this, the control request. Ah, oh, oh, here we go. No. Now we can implement our controller. Okay, cool, cool, sorry. I don't, what? Oh. Oh, our client get Oh, okay, Ben's Ben's in here for the save. Let's see if that get. They don't ever talk about that. I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll get there. Well, let's let's try it and see. Oof. that is but I don't have a context maybe that comes from the request oh 
Okay. Um, here we go. <laughs> What's object? Hmm. Still learning. Like I said, I'm sorry. It's been a really long time since I've actually done anything outside the K-native land. So we are in a fun duck type adventure. So we're looking at the docks right now. Writing ten. No, I want it. What? Implementing. Yes. This. This should. This should say something about getting. Now we can implement our controller. What? What are you talking about? Hmm. Then an empty version of the object you're retrieving. So I assume that means my square type. What is this thing called? It's called the square. Whoa. Where how do you get used? Interesting. Hmm. Oh, okay. Here we go. I found one. <laughs> so, so it's a square. I'm assuming it's probably going to be a pointer type and we're going to get it. A result. I, I now I recall some stuff about this. We're we gonna. I bet there's a switch windows. We're good. We're good. We're in the go. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Um. So one of my favorite features, when I don't know something, I just do one of those. Okay, so now I guess we have an object and it came back clean. And we're gonna take a look at its spec. And we're looking at base. And we're gonna say object status dot result equals and then just multiply two of these thingies by line 41 oh i don't i have no idea here evan that, that is a weird thing i don't know why you do that maybe to remind people ah you know what i bet they're doing is making sure that the imports pull in context so that when I typed context.background, everything was PG. Okay, so now we have a result, right? It's base times base, which is base squared. And then we're gonna make our cute little value here. The expression is, and I hope, Victor is not on the call because I'm going to use an S print. And then we can make this fancier, but that's not really my point here, right? It's okay. Oh, of course. Okay, so that, that defaults to false. We're just going to re return that. We're never going to try again because we can math. 
Cool. Okay. We're good. We're good. So let's try deploying one. I'm not totally sure if I I need to recompile or rebuild anything. I don't think so. So I'm just going to attempt to apply that same release. Don't forget to update. What? I don't I have to manual what? Okay, Matt is reminding me that I might have to ask this thing to update the status. Is that true? Oh my goodness. Hmm. Yep, you're right. It's been a long time since I've had to think about that. What are the update options? Apply. Okay, we're fine. So, boom, and then boop. Rebuild. Ben asks, what kind of magic controllers have I been using? So, in Knative, we've been building a, th a thin wrapper that sits on top of the the reconcile key idea. We started with what's what's inside of API machinery as a example API, and we built from there. And so we, I showed you that actually. I, okay, tangent. This is fun. Um, this is the this reconcile kind function is the the what gets invoked from a bunch of. Uh, generated code. So we, we do generated code because there's no, there's no, uh, we want strongly typed, right? Like it's kind of a bad experience if you pass in like a, a runtime object here that it happens to be a type, but we don't know it because we can't tell you. So there's, I'm actually importing the, right, the client injection reconciler math subtraction reconciler and that's the thing that does all of the common uh, tasks that you need to do to do reconciliation like update the status or hydrate the thing or make sure you don't mutate the spec or update conditions and that that kind of stuff right like retries on apply uh, because sometimes if you mutate the status and you want to go push it back but it's mutated because the spec changed or whatever but you still want to store that status we can do retries where you you bump up the resource number and things like that. So maybe like do a merge of things that don't matter. All of that stuff is handled by this generated layer above this layer. All I'm responsible for is taking this object. Note that I don't have to do any deep copies or anything which might get me in trouble on the other side in the controller runtime code. So So yeah, I, I forgot because I, I, I was able to forget. So that's nice. Let's see if it did it. All right, so uh, let's, ooh, let's update our example so that we can actually apply something. And so we'll leave that, leave that there. I don't know, um, how about five? And then we come up here and say, samples. Okay, what did it do? New keyboard, fingers are still trying to figure it out. No spec, no status. I mean, it could be that I'm misunderstanding some of the... Uh... Actually, uh, we've got... The math system. Was it saying? 
Oh, it, it did a thing. It thinks it did it. Cool. So it could be... Well, okay, sorry. This is now turning into me trying to learn how to use controller runtime, but I, do I have to regenerate some stuff to make this the CRD have the right pieces? Maybe. We'll, we'll just try it. We'll just try it. I think it was make install. And then we're going to get out of the all of that stuff and, and run the customized piece. <laughs> My notes have the wrong command. Okay, so we're maybe that thing built some new stuff. I'm not totally sure. Let's just check out Stern. Everyone know what Stern is? There's a couple other tools like it, but it basically, it lets me watch any logs of anything that uh, matches some regular expression, which is super nice. And it does active watches for like new, as new pods come in and out. So I'm gonna, from a different window, I'm gonna just kub cuddle delete those pods. Because you know what? I don't, I don't trust it. Let's see what's going on. Okay, the it's getting a lease. Go, go, go. It got a lease. It reconciled. Okay, so it thinks it did it. Maybe my maybe my update status isn't happening. Let's just get it one more time to make sure. There's no status. What's up? Well, now I am confused. Uh, I defined some stuff here. That looks good. That looks good. Important run make to generate. Yeah, so I, I think we did that. So funny. It, so let's see. Bin manager, I think, is probably what gets wrapped up in the Docker file but we don't actually use that. Maybe that's something we needed to do, or it's maybe it formatted, not formatted. We need to enable the status of resource. That could be, uh, I think there's an annotation for that for Kube Builder. So we'll just switch to Chrome. Mm, okay. We were talking about the, in the Knative version, we kind of assume that everything has to have a status, so that gets pre-baked. Oh, oh, aha. So. There was no annotation here. We don't need any other path. So, all right, we'll try it again. I guess we run make. I don't think that's gonna do it. What we want is the controller gen. So, aha, oh. Oh. 
let's let's just check out the CRD just real quick. Oof. Okay, now it has a status object. Uh, maybe it was there before. Aha, cool. But it has the two things. So I, th I think that now the open API is, it understands what I'm talking about. And maybe the controller has done the right thing because the CRD is updated. If we touch it. Oof, oof, so sorry. Bam. So we'll start up a watch, and I just killed the pods. Maybe it, in another window, I'm going to try editing it. <laughs> Who knows? Difficult. What's your name? Sample square. I don't know if you if you don't know this trick, you just add if you want to get a something to re-reconcile or re-reconcile, you just maybe like add an annotation and that should poke the reconciler to uh to do something. But it didn't. So maybe there's some extra stuff that that needs to uh, get built. So let's just try after that make and the annotation. We are going to apply the release YAML again. OK. It's... Multiply system. OK, we've reconciled once did it did it do it may need r back uh, yes you're probably right why would that just not be there okay whatever square editor squares status now we're good oh get what Come on. So, you know what? We're just going to do this. If you're an editor, you're good to go. What is that? Formatting. You know what? One thing Goland is kind of bad at is YAML. It doesn't do it. And every time I copy and paste, it just, it's like, blah, it has a bad day. So, okay, we're going to do customize one more time to get back to our release, and then we can co-apply. I know I don't have to build the container, but it's just the process goes really fast if that's, that's like your loop, right? All right, so we're back, and let's run a watch on the object. And hopefully, this thing gets a status as soon as it gets reconciled. I don't, yeah, controller. So Carlos is saying a controller without a status. I, I don't, at that point, is it really a resource or is it just a data? I haven't found a lot of uses for just pure data, except for like config map. Maybe it says structured config map. Hey. Hmm. Okay, it's getting the lease. It reconciled. It's not there. Hmm. 
I wonder if there's like a kube builder command that I'm supposed to have run instead of trying to do this by hand. Well, um, plan B, I don't know. <laughs> this, this is like simple stuff. I expected this to just kind of work. Yeah, they don't have spec, they just have data. That's right. Um, the manager, hmm. Maybe I'm getting an error from the update. I'm hoping it. What's this? What logger? Sure. Can't see, can't see my, wait, Matt, are you, can you still not see the editor? I have go land on screen. And for fun, if we get past here, What? Well, that makes me really uncomfortable, but okay. Do I, hmm. Do I have to, no, maybe it's uh, weird. What I want to do is, okay, well, I don't know here. I guess we have to wrap it with this. Because I don't know what it's going to do. And we want the object that we created. Okay, so maybe some arrow things for fun. And reapply. Oop. So we're looking for an arrow. Come on, arrow. Oh, oh, we blew up. Odd number of arguments. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm I'm betting it's because keys and values is not what I would expect, and it's not typed, so it's uh not helped me a lot. Keys and values. All right, so we're going to apply again. And we're going to come back here. Is it zap? Is it delegating to zap? I normally use zap, but I, I tend to 
pass in zap objects. And we got another stack trace. Sample square not found. That's weird because you just reconciled it, right? Uh, interesting. <laughs> what do you mean not found? Come on. Do I need a namespace? Uh, oh, you're thinking. I don't. Namespace name. Could be. Let's see. Let's let's poke at the client interface real quick. Oh, status client, status writer, update with stuff. No, maybe we patch. I don't think so. Where is the resource deployed? It should be in default. No, 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 no. Uh, maths only has the other controller. So uh, get. Oh, it didn't add it to all. <laughs> so this sample square, right? Coop cuddle. Uh, get this. It, it has a namespace, but the update is not using the namespace. What is, um, what's inside the multi, multiply namespace? We can do it get all. So just normal stuff and not very old pod because we just shipped it. A deployment that's slightly older as we've been fumbling around, so sorry. And then a bunch of replicas because that's how it works. So that looks right, but we're still getting, we're still getting that, uh, Multiply. We'll just take a look at this pod log. Oh, come on. I wonder if this is actually the cache is out of date. I wonder if we can go in and touch this little resource and see if it wakes up. So in a different window, I'm going to keep cuddle edit. The, uh... There's a called? It's a square and its name is square sample. I'm going to delete that please work. <laughs> what in the world is going on? Uh, hmm. No, it's, so it has the right namespace and it has the right name and it has the right kind. I, I wonder if it's an, hmm. Yeah. 
do we need to do something? Update is missing the namespace. There isn't an obvious place to put the status update. Well, we already updated the RBAC, and we would get some other error if it was but the not found is really weird. I mean, we could try just doing an update and it'll do the right thing. We could try that. I, I, I thought that's not allowed, but we could try it. Config. Other pro tip, always use a generation. It's really difficult to understand what a reconciler is doing if it doesn't propagate the generation into an observed generation instead of status. Yeah, it, I just did that, Matt. Not on the type structure. Uh, let me check. Let's check. Sub resource status is not on the type structure. Uh, That's, I think that's where it said it should go. Oh, you're right. The docs say, it goes on the object that has everything else. So it's, it's on this thing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for that detour. Let's try again. So we're going to make, do make, and then we're going to spit out the YAML so we can use co. And then we're going to go apply. Ooh, our back might get broke because I edited the. Actually, it found out that there was a different thing. So inside of the, the role, it has the right stuff. So that should be OK. I don't know what the editor role is, and it looks like my changes are still there, so that's okay. Okay, so it launched. Let's just hope for the best here and just take a look. Oh my goodness, we have, okay, all right, we're back on business. So, <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So now we have a thing that is a custom silly resource that implements our duct type. 
Okay, but that's only a little bit of the problem because of RBAC. So we need to go and create a custom RBAC role that assembles. Oh, hang on. so over here in the maths department, the controller can only do what it can do because it has this results viewer cluster role. And so what this is, is a cluster role that goes and collects all other cluster roles with uh, duck.tableflip.dev results. Okay. And then down here, because this particular controller implements the maths resource and it adds add and subtract, we want to be able to get and list on those things. So we can copy this and make some minor modifications and then we'll we should have a, a good to go multiply that we can use as reference in the original project with without actually touching it again okay so here we go back to go we'll make a new file here we'll call this the So we want to make a cluster role that is a the I don't know we'll call it the uh, the multi viewer. The important bit is this label. That's going to let the the cluster role that has been defined in the maths project actually use the role. And then this stuff is wrong, right? And I think let's see. Make sure we get this right. For whatever reason, it added a tgik.tgik. Maybe I messed that up. I, I doubt that I'm supposed to just say .io, but OK, that's cool. Uh, and the resource, right, it's, it's their squares, but with a little s. Ooh. Okay. So now what's supposed to have happened is the controller of, of the maths department has picked that thing up and reapplied. Now it has the rights to go and read the uh, the new types that we've installed. So let let's go up here and we can make a new make a new example of a mix. Actually, we could maybe probably edit this thing. So let's add another ref. And I'm I'm really sorry about how slow it it was to get the. Uh, controller runtime bit going because I just haven't touched it. What's the... All right, so here's our example. Let's give it a cool name like demo. We don't need bar anymore. And then over here, we're going to use demo in it's a square and it comes from tgik okay so i'm going to apply this but for for your sake maybe we'll do I think we didn't add custom columns to square, so it's not actually that interesting to watch. But we can go over here. We can 
make a new square. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to make it so it's pasteable. Somebody, Kevin says kube cuddle get minus w. The, the bummer with kube cuddle get minus w is that it appends lines to changes, and you get this stream of stuff, and it's not exactly clear what it what it's doing. I prefer watching the kube cuddle call. I do have to wait two seconds, but I get a more crisp result. Okay, and just to confirm, right? Well, kube cuddle get. Let's see if our math is well. I'm sure, it worked. So that thing. Doesn't have a spot. What? Now I'm confused. No, I'm I'm actually really confused. I, why is that? This one has a status. Maybe it just takes a while. Maybe you have to wait for the uh, relist. Okay, well, plan B. We'll figure it out that later. So back over here. <laughs> Let's use the one that works so that we can move on. Uh, the, uh, the API version looks good. So we're going to update next. OK, so our back is not quite yet uh, ready. Double check the, the it's actually right. That's ah, ah, ah. I, hmm. Okay, hold on. So the expression didn't get updated because we're unable to go and fetch the, the mixed object, which means either RBAC didn't assemble in the way that we thought, or the API group is wrong. But, you know, we got this, and this looks right. Had a V1. Oh, thank you. Because I copied and pasted. Yeah, it's API groups, not API versions. Okay, that makes sense. Before we go and touch anything, we'll just go and reapply that. Here we go. So we're not. Our back results. Now changing our back doesn't actually cause re reconciliation. So let's poke it. You can't make a poke Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. You know what? Okay. Let's let's just let's be real for a minute. This is the the single dumbest thing that Kubernetes ever did. The single versus plural resource names. Bane of my existence. The unsafe guest to, to resource. I hate that method. The worst. I, if you're not aware of this, I think you know it's like a a good re rest pattern was a single square means the resource. Squares means to list all the resources. So what happens is uh, you never know what the thing is going to be. It's So you have to guess, or you have to look it up, and it's it's non-trivial. Let's remove poke. Sometimes RBAC aggregation takes a minute to actually collect. The kind is right. The sample, that's the right. Yeah, okay, so at, our back has not yet collected. That's okay. If we're impatient, we can kill the pod and it'll reload. Maybe we'll do that. The, the so, so because I'm doing a multi resource watch, the re, the resource kind here is added to the name, I think. So the the API group is this. The name of the resource is this. Okay, we got another squares, TGIK, DGIK is forbidden because why? Yeah. Oh. How do I fetch the aggregated cluster role? Like, does it have a status and it tells me what's what's there? Let's just double check what it's called. <laughs> oh no, my my demo has a typo. That's stupid, but okay, I'm sorry about that. It shouldn't change the controller.
Look at that. Okay, so I didn't have to kill the pod. It just, uh, I had a small typo when I was copying and pasting the cluster roles. So I, I defined the aggregate cluster role, and then I accidentally didn't rename the the local cluster role that gets aggregated. So it worked in the demo uh, because, you know, it, it it has the right rights, but it didn't have that aggregate role. So we added, we switched out, use the same name as the role binding uses, which is here, the oh, cluster role binding. So this is where it's collecting the results viewer. That's how it knows the other duct types. We had a typo there. We fixed it. We we also have the correct cluster role here in for our multi viewer, which is this uh, multiply class. And the result, we go back here, is we get our our cute little text inside of the ad. So now we have this this full thing. We 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 provide a, a the ad resource gets a fixed value. It gets a, subtra a subtraction an addition, and now this uh, uh, multiplication or square function. OK, all right, so uh, sorry. That, that was a long, long haul. Thank you for sticking with me. Uh, OK, so OK, so let's go. Let's talk about duct typing a little bit. So like, wh what would you do with this stuff? What I'm trying to show is the what I've done is made this ecosystem of things that you could come participate in, right? Like if you would like to be a, 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 re, a resource that produced a result by providing an equation, you could participate by adding the R back for your resource and having the right shape so that my controllers can go and without understanding anything about you, uh, Change what we square. Oh yeah, okay. So Matt wants me to do an active watch. That's the other neat thing. So let, okay, this is a. Uh... Got distracted. Oh. So if we change the the base number to ten which is a more bigger number. Well, the funny thing is, I don't know if the controller is still working because like the controller runtime stuff seems to be a little uh, needy. So let's see if that even, so it, this is still on the old thing and I don't know how to kick it. Let's cheat. Where did this stuff live? It lives in. The multiply system, of course. So let's just bounce controller runtime and see what's up. And hopefully we get a reconciliation. You can do it, buddy. You got this. I, you know what? Um, so the issue is that I, I think that there's, but I just, I just killed all the pots. So it really should just work. But I don't really see a place where I can set up watches. I guess that's what this is. And I think when I'm watching these resources, that's what that is supposed to do. It's managed by that. It's that type. I don't know what complete does. Maybe that's the builder. Yeah, you, I, I don't think you need to set up a watch. Let's, let's just make sure. Watch it stern. I, 
okay, that that's cool that they're showing me the raw patch. That's that's nice. Updated status. What did you update it to? You're looking at the wrong thing there. You never got the update. Oh, hey, there's a, there's our new one. What? Oh, we never switched back to the old status update. That is a good point. Yeah, client.stats. I got it. Oop. Release. Oh, wrong place. So we have to wait the uh, the lease expiration time. Yeah, to be honest, it's super hard to watch the uh, YouTube channel chat and try to talk and try to type at the same time. I, you know, kudos to Joe for doing this and making it look easy. It's a, uh, it's good. Okay, come on, do your thing. Go, 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 go. Do it. You can do it. I think this is an old log. We haven't seen anything new yet. Hmm, getting the image poll error. Cool. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if uh, I got helped. <laughs> Let's just double check. No, we didn't get helped. Image pull error, that's interesting. Should totally work. I wonder which image it's trying to pull. Oh, ha, it's because I'm in a new terminal and it doesn't have the kind config. Let's just try this one last time. So now we're, we're going to push to the kind. There's a local kind registry that, yeah, there we go. That's That looks better. And so if we if we go up here, I'm sure, yeah, it was pushing to my Azure cluster. So, ha, <laughs> never push a new tab. OK, now we're running. And we should be reconciling. You got this. Hey, OK, cool. Did you see the? mixed signal got updated. And so there's a bit of magic there in the reconciler that I haven't really shown you inside of package reconciler. Take the add controller. When I set up the instance of the reconciler, I am I set up all this uh, watches on the, re basically so remember I was doing tracking for objects. The tracker has a delegate. The, the delegate re enqueues the, uh, the thing that I would like to reconcile. So when, I, when I'm when i doing the real reconciliation and I, I ask the tracker for the reference, it registers the, I'm interested in this thing every time it changes, please re-enqueue me. And so 
without changing anything or even being aware of the real kind, the when we're reconciling adds and this thing points to an object reference of something like a square, it changed. So, oh, 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 oh sorry. Uh, uh, so let me go back. So uh, there's, there's this, the delegate is watching on the factory for the, so the tracker calls the delegate and says like, yay, something I tracked got updated. And then it re, uh, so it recalls reconcile kind. Yeah, yeah, it's also delayed, it's the problem. So, okay, so magic, that's magic. Um, the demo worked, right? So now now we can at will change this thing and, and not be so embarrassed. You know, fumble, 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 it's fine. I don't know, let's do 42 because that's a nice fun number. And we see that the result instantly gets updated in the ad because that's how you know edge-based reconciliation works. So okay, cool. So so back to back to the duct type top, right? Like if I think that there's kind of two people that are thinking about providing uh like you can either provide duct types to play in an ecosystem so that others can come in and add their whatever thing. And so like, how would you use this in the real world? In Knative, we use it to figure out the address of some object that represents something that has an internet address. So uh, through the this same technique that I've shown, you can look in the status of any subscriber object in some of our resources, and you can pull out its URI and invoke it over HTTP. The, we also do this by, um, we make CRDs that represent protocol choices for channels. They're strongly typed CRDs with all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and then there's, there's a duct type contract that actually lets us mutate them generically. So I can operate on these like channelable objects and I can inject subscribers into their specs and they can reconcile it in whatever way they need to. And we never have to, but we can provide that same, well, I'm going to do a single job and I'm going to inject the subscribers into your spec for you as a specific role. So that lets us have a very extendable system in this duct type ecosystem. So the, you know, we could also do, um, I don't know if, if your resource has a backup, maybe there's like a, you can add something to the spec that says like, do a backup. And then that Valero stuff can, you know, do its thing. So the, what I want to shout out to here is, uh, I am asking inside of the API machinery to come and it would be really cool if we could upstream a lot of this work. Right now, um, there there's several, so the list of, uh, right, so there's this giant list of current implementers of duct type concepts. Some things call it duct types. Some like example, like Crossplane totally understands they're producing duct types. Service bindings, they call them duct types. Cluster API is actually doing exactly the same thing with, with aggregate roles and some other stuff. In their case, you want to have um, you know, an, an object that represents configuration on some remote cluster. Uh, and then they want to be able to have you provide instances of those cluster objects, and, and then it, their controllers can operate on some generic pieces or view the status in some generic way based on duct types, right? So based on some partial schema that we've, uh, we understand. So we are going to meet and we're going to talk uh, it in more detail and hopefully show a better, quicker demo <laughs> during the meeting <laughs> to uh, talk about duct types and where we could get some common tooling inside of upstream Kubernetes so that everyone can pull from that or build from that. And I don't know what the world will look like kind of in a, a year 
uh, it's going to be really interesting because I could provide a big platform where, I, you know, my real contract is a, an assembly of duck types. All like, so I, I have a runtime contract that's this duck, that duck, and the other duck. And then I can plug into these systems that maybe only care about one aspect of that duck type. But I can make choices when I'm authoring the my CRDs for later so that I can target those other ecosystems that I'm aware of. But, but right now, there's not a real good way to describe or even agree what those shapes should be. And Kubernetes kind of already has a couple duck types, right? Like if you think of owner refable, every resource can be owned by another resource because of garbage collection. And things, tools like Octant take advantage of this by building up object graphs and viewing what things are. And, and that tool just works even for CRDs that it doesn't know because uh, every resource has that common shape. So the proposal is, you know, some common tooling for being able to make uh, reconcilers that can operate on a duct type uh, and uh, uh, maybe a discovery API, which I'll demo in the workgroup meeting next, I think it's next Thursday or Wednesday. I think it's, hmm. I think it's Thursday. I don't know. Well, check the Twitters. I ah, I don't know. Um, with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I think we're kind of over time. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, I hope it was interesting. I'm so sorry for fumbling with the controller runtime. It, maybe I should have tried it a little harder. But uh, yeah, that's that's the show, I think. What do you think? Any questions? Um, yeah, I, I've been answering stuff as we go, but maybe there's some more direct questions that I could try. Okay, awesome. Well, I'll see you on the internet. Uh, this is super fun. See you next time. <laughs>